Who would have ever thought that 85 degrees could feel so good? Even though it's still a little warm out here, we're still gonna break a sweat today. It beats the fire out of that 95 to 98 degree stuff we've been dealing with for the last several weeks. So today we're continuing along with our fall planting of cool weather crops here in the Dream Garden. On our previous video, if you didn't see that, go check it out. We installed our drip tape on this plot here behind me got everything hooked up showed how we set up all those fittings and all that good stuff and today we've got a lot of good transplants we're ready to put in the ground if this is your first time visiting our channel welcome go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button down below so you get notified every time we come out with a new video if you're a frequent viewer of our channel it's always good to have you back but before we plant some more cool weather crops today let's take a look and see how our other plot of cool weather crops is doing the one we planted in the blazing heat and the one we had to put some overhead water on just to keep it cooled off until these temps broke so here's our plot of collards kale lacinato or dinosaur kale green magic broccoli and cauliflower they're on the end white cauliflower and I did have to overhead water these a ton. I'm talking about three or four hours a day after I planted these guys just to keep them surviving along. But they're starting to grow now. They've overcome their transplant shock and they're starting to grow. The leaves are getting bigger. Plants are looking a lot better. We did lose a few in there we'll have to replace. But considering what we were dealing with, losing only a few plants, hey, I'm super, super happy with that looks like most everything made it there these collards are looking really really nice really happy with how they're going looks like those roots have taken hold in the ground there they're starting to absorb some of that water and these things should start growing pretty fast so we didn't lose a lot here and we're happy with that you never want to work as hard as we do to put in these transplants and then lose them all i've heard of a lot of the big commercial farmers out here losing cabbage and broccoli hundreds of acres of them so the fact that we were able to salvage these is always a good deal here's the plot we're planting today we installed our drip on a previous video we've got the drip turned on you can see there those drip tubes are expanded those water spots are starting to appear there every foot along that tape where those emitters are that's where we'll be putting our transplant so we're just waiting a little bit for those water spots to become a little more prominent and then we'll be able to stick our transplants right on top of each one of those emitters so while we're waiting on those water spots to develop let's take a look at what we're going to be planting today so the first thing here we've got some cheers cabbage so this is a green round cabbage and this is a hybrid variety that a lot of the commercial guys around here grow. It's supposed to be really, really nice. Make some really nice big heads. So we're really excited about growing that. We can see these transplants here. Nice. Got a nice little root ball there ready to go in the ground. Now anytime I mention something that the commercial guys grow, someone always asks, is this GMO cabbage? Well, there's no such thing as GMO cabbage. So the answer to that would be no. And we've got some more cabbage here. This is our Rio Grande red cabbage. This is supposed to be one of the bigger red cabbages out there, if not the biggest. Uh, we planted the other half of this flat at my consultant farm, but I should have enough here for one row. So we're gonna plant, I think four rows or this whole flat of Cheers cabbage and then probably get one row of this red Rio Grande cabbage. And then here we've got some more kale. This is a variety called Blue Knight. So this is a more frilly leaved kale than say the dinosaur or lacinato kale is. And um, I like this type of kale because the leaves are a little more tender. So this stuff works really good in a salad. It sautés down really fast. So if you want something a little more tender, uh, go with this frilly leaf kale. This Blue Knight is a great variety. And then fourth on the list here is rutabagas. Now, I have never grown rutabagas before. And it was something I really didn't care for growing up. But as I've gotten older, my taste buds have matured more. And I like stuff that I didn't like when I was younger. So I figured I'd give them a try. This is a variety called Laurentian. 
Now I think a lot of people direct seed these things, but I figured I'd give it a try with the transplants. I've got some good looking transplants here and I might even plant these guys on double rows. So trying rutabagas for the first time. So that's really exciting. Can't wait to see how they turn out. And then lastly here, we've got some more cauliflower. This is a purple cauliflower. And these transplants have been growing a little while. They're nice and ready to go in the ground. They probably could have went in the ground a couple weeks ago, but we were just trying to hold off and wait till things cool down a little bit. So this is a variety called graffiti. It makes a nice, beautiful purple cauliflower head. Anytime you eat something in the garden with color to it, like purple or uh, anything dark colored like that, it always is full of anthocyanins, which are really good for you. So we we'll always try to eat lots of colors from the garden. One more thing on these rutabaga transplants here. Since I'm a rookie at this, I need you guys' help. So when you plant rutabagas, if you grow rutabagas out there, do you direct seed them? Do you transplant them like this? Do you plant them on double rows or do you give them plenty of space? I think we're gonna try double rows today, but I'd love to hear from you rutabaga experts out there. What's the best way to plant them? You know, how long does it normally take them to grow out? If you got any tips and tricks on fertilizing them, I'd love to hear that. And even if you've got some really good rutabaga recipes, please share those as well. All right, so it looks like all my water spots are nice and prominent so I can see where to put my plants. So we're gonna go ahead and plant these 11 rows here with all those transplants I just showed you. We're gonna put them right on top of those water spots on one foot spacing. Shouldn't take too long. We're gonna go in there and drop those plants along the row. Then we'll scoot along there and put them down there by each emitter. See that water spot right there? Put that plant right on top of it. See right there? Leave that one there. Don't put it in the ground yet. Put this one on that next water spot. See the next water spot? Yeah, okay. Let's go to the next one. Put that plant on that water spot. You see it? You ready to on TV right now? Say hey. Say hey to everybody. Say hey. Tell them what your name is. Abram. Abram. You're going to be on TV. You're going to be a big YouTube superstar. You know that? Come on, let's put these plants out. Aww. Aww. Well, I'm going to show my head. You want to do what? I'm going to show my head. You want to show your head? Yeah. Mommy's showing your head. Come on. You worried nobody can see you? Watch out, don't step right there. You'll sink down, it's wet. Come on, get over here. Right here, don't step in the wet spots. Get dirt all in your toenails. Oh, there you go, you just did it, didn't you? So a lot of people have been asking me, am I putting this transplant right on top of the drip tape or to the side of it? So what I do is I feel around there, find the tape. You can see the tape right there. You can see the water coming out of that emitter right there. Watch out, Bubby. And, uh, you actually are putting it kind of to the side of it. So I make a little hole there to the side of that emitter, put it right in there, cover it up, and you're good to go. All right, all right, all right. So we got our second plot of cool weather crops planted in the dream garden, all 11 rows there on a three foot row spacing. Now, after I planted these guys, I did turn the overhead sprinkler on for about 30 or 45 minutes just to cool everything off. Those plants, you could tell we're suffering a little bit from the heat, even though it's about 10 degrees cooler today, that soil is still pretty dang hot. And so there's a lot of heat coming off that soil and those plants just can't take it right when they're being transplanted. So we put that overhead sprinkler on them, cool off those leaves, cool off that soil a little bit, get some evaporative cooling going on. 
and once they take root they'll be just fine we can just use the drip from there on out I think the really hot temperatures are gone for a long time so let's see what we got here we've got four rows of this cheers cabbage which seems like a lot of cabbage but we're planning on getting a couple of them nice stone fermenting crocs and making a good bit of sauerkraut this winter so all this cabbage will come in handy doing that you see we've got some nice looking cabbage transplants in the ground there those babies ought to take off pretty soon as soon as they get over that little bit of transplant shock we go over here we got our one row of red cabbage our rio grande right there in the ground you can see we've still got a good bit of organic material from that sorghum sedan grass there that's yet to break down but that should only help the soil from here on out then these next two rows here we've got our blue night kale which you can see right there that kind of frilly leafed tender kale and then on the rutabagas i chickened out on the double rows i just i just chickened out on it uh I wasn't sure about it because I've never grown them before so I just went ahead and just did a single row planting of those two rows of those and, and I don't know which this is just going to be a experiment like I said I've never grown rutabagas before so we'll see how they do from transplants it may turn out they do better with direct seeding really dense on a bed we'll just see but it's not going to hurt to try and then lastly We've got our purple cauliflower, our graffiti cauliflower transplants. And these were probably the biggest transplants that I had. They were planted first in those trays. And they're looking really good too. So like I told you on the last video, it was fall planting. It's just like eating an elephant. We just have to do it one bite at a time, one plot at a time. We don't expect to do it all in one day. We just can't do it all in one day. So we lay drip one day on a plot we plant another day we'll eventually get it all knocked out so we've got two plots out of the way and we've still got two more that we need to plant in this dream garden here so you can see behind me i've got two plots with tarps on them one of those had sorghum sedan grass that we crimped one of these the one that's closest to me here had sun hemp that i also crimped both of those plots are ready to go i just got to get in there put some compost down and get the soil ready to plant get my drip tape laid and all that good stuff in one of those plots we're going to do a lot of beets we like to transplant beets so we're going to transplant some beets in there some red beets and some gold beets we'll probably direct seed some radishes i still got some brussels sprouts so i've got to get in the ground so we'll have room for those on one of the plots and then the other plots we're going to plant or excuse me the other plot we're gonna plant and just carrots. So we've got a lot of new great varieties of carrots on the site and I wanna be able to try them all. So I'm probably gonna put those on a two and a half foot spacer or so, really stack rows of carrots in one of those plots and just have the whole thing full of carrots. So those two plots will be next on our list, probably doing the beets, the radishes and Brussels sprouts first, waiting on the soil to cool down a little bit more before we do the carrots probably middle to end of October. And then in this plot right behind me here, where I've got this nice patch of sorghum sedan grass. I've already mowed this area one time and it grew back really nice. And um, this is where I'm gonna put all my alliums, elephant garlic, onions, all that good stuff come November. Shallots too, leeks, all those good alliums we're gonna stack in this plot here behind me. So still a good bit of fall planting to go but we're well on our way. If you're growing cabbage this fall like we are, let me know in the comments below what your favorite or your go-to cabbage variety is. I'd love to hear it. And if it's a variety we can get, we'll be glad to add it to our lineup. Also, let me know about the rutabagas. Like I said, I'm a rutabaga rookie this year. I don't know anything about them. This is my first time growing them. So let me know all your tips and tricks on growing nice, big, tasty rutabagas. I'll put some links below to all the seeds of the varieties that we planted in this video. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you next time.